Hey, welcome to Color Up Poker. Today I'm back here at the Grand Sierra Resort in Reno, Nevada with Josh, the poker room manager. Hello. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Today, so I've encountered quite a few things at the table that as a new player, they were a little different for me. Um, things like missed blind buttons, reserve buttons. Some people, they lose all their money and they want to rebuy. So I would There's a like, lot of different scenarios. Yeah, a lot of situations that you can kind of talk through, and for those who are new to the game like me, that we'll have a little better understanding. Will that? Yeah, absolutely. We can go through a few of the more common scenarios okay. and um, just kind of talk about how everything works. Let's get right to it. Okay, so Josh, uh, a <laughs> situation I've run into, and I don't know if this is the worst case or whatever, but I go all in and I lose, all my money is gone. Okay. It happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it happens all the time, right? There's always got to be a winner and a loser in poker every hand. It's a zero-sum game, right? In order for you to win, somebody else has to lose, vice versa. So if you happen to be on the losing end, right, and you go all in and, and, you, and you lose, uh, you know, now it's called being felted. Okay. Um, Let's just say, for an example, you know, you're playing, <clears throat> you're sitting in the seat one next to the dealer, and on, on uh, let's say the button was here, okay, in seat eight, and down that hand you went all in and lost, okay? Yep. Now the dealer will move the button here. Um, they'll ask you, you know, sir, would you like a hand or would you like to rebuy, um, you know, and if you say yes, Let's just say, for instance, you have to go to the ATM, right? Right, I got no money left. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, usually the dealer will ask you, uh, hey, Jeremy, you know, would you like a hand or would you like me to deal you in? And you may say, I got to run to the ATM. Okay, so what the dealer will do is they will put a reserve button in your seat and that will let all the other players at the table uh, as well as the dealer know that uh, you're away from the table, but you're, but you're gonna come back. Okay. Okay. In that scenario, when you come back to the game, you don't have to pay any missed blinds. Like for instance, if the button goes around the table and you would have uh, been the big blind, um, you don't have to pay the blinds when you come back in, in an instance where you have a reserve button. Okay. On that same topic, right, for, for missed blinds, uh, let's say that, you know, a better scenario is that you still have money left on the table. Okay. okay. So let's say you're playing right now, right? Okay. You've got your stack and, you know, the button was here. Now the button goes here and it's supposed to be your blind on this hand. And you're like, I got to go to the bathroom. So, you know, you tell the dealer, uh, uh, don't deal me in or deal me out. I got to run to the bathroom real quick. Okay. You get up and leave the table. The dealer is going to give you a miss blind button. Okay, so I'll put that in front of your stack. And when you return from the bathroom, you're going to have to make up your blinds uh, or you're going to have to, to pay the blinds that you missed. So there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Uh, in a one, two, no limit game, you have to pay $3 every time the button goes around the table. Okay. For the small blind and the big blind combined, basically you missed them both. Okay. Yep. So when you come back from the table, uh, from the bathroom, you'll have or to coffee pay or whatever, right? It's yeah, coffee, okay. uh, bathroom, to go play a slot machine, okay. whatever it is. Okay. Um, you'll have to pay the three dollars when you come back. So uh, there's really three kind of different scenarios of how you can do that. So the first one would be you'll pay the big blind when it's your turn to pay the big blind. Okay, and in order to do that, uh, you'll just have to put out $2. So you can go ahead and put $2 out along with your missed blind button. Okay, and then the dealer knows that you're coming back into the game. So you've got your, your big blind out there, you've got your missed blind. Okay, so you've got your blind posted, you're good to go. You're back in the game. Okay, um, the next scenario would be um, let's say you came back on the next hand. Okay. So the button's here in seat nine, you're in seat one, and on the last hand, uh, let's see, you have a missed blind button. The last hand, this player over here was the big blind, okay? Well, you're gonna do something, it's called uh, buy the button, which means you're gonna pay the big blind and the small blind both at once, okay? So you can, uh, 
uh, you can do that right now. Um, so it'll be three dollars, okay, with your along with your miss blind button, okay. And the dealer will take one dollar. They'll put it in the center. That's dead. Uh, now you're the only person paying a blind in this hand, and you're paying both the big and the small blind at once. That will also allow you to be the button on the next hand. Okay, so that's what it, that's why it's called buying the button. So okay. on the next hand. You're gonna you're gonna get the button position, which is the the best position on the table during a hand, um, and so because otherwise it would have to it would skip me. Yes. Because people could kind of finagle the system, I guess. I'm gonna step away from the table for a minute and then come back. Oh, look. I have to yeah. The, okay. Yeah. The so blind. well. What do you yeah. Know? I mean. Or the button. There's no way to get around paying the blinds once yeah. you're in the game. Okay. So you have to pay the same amount every round, no matter what. And um, you know, it's so there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, now I've seen there's actually been multiple blinds or buttons. Yeah, well, um, so the reason that'll happen is it's different from house poker room to poker room. But the dealers here, uh, mm -hmm. we give a miss blind every time that the button goes around. That way we know how long you've been gone. Um, there's also timers um, associated with your seat through through Bravo, but uh, so if they took a longer break and the and the, the button, button kept traveling around the table, in this correct. case three times. Okay. Yeah. So it, so it would have gone around three times. That kind of signals the dealer. Oh, he's been gone for. You know, he's got three missed blinds. You know, if we're busy and there's a list, uh, at that point you may get picked up okay. and put back on the list. Um, so that's that's the only reason you would have seen multiple missed blinds. Like yeah, that. I don't think I've ever you seen. You still three, only but... have to, you still only have to pay the blind one time. Oh, okay. So, even if the button goes around your seat three times while you're up from the table, when you come back, you still only have to pay the three dollars or whatever game you're playing, you have to pay one round worth of blinds. So the other two are just basically tracking <clears throat> to, yeah. hey, this player's taping. Yep. He's not playing. Yep, exactly. And if there's other people waiting, then okay. Yep, it's just for the dealer. Okay. So. Um, the third option that you would have would be, uh, let's say you have the missed blind and the button is here, and the dealer says, Jeremy, would you like to buy the button? And you say, no, I'll wait, okay? okay. So this hand would get played, you would not get dealt in. Now the button, now that the hand's over and the button moves to the next player to your left. And now you decide that you'd like to come back in and uh, pay your blinds. So you can, you can now post $3 on this hand. Uh, so if you want to come back in now, Jeremy, go ahead and put $3 out there. And it's similar to the last hand, the dealer will take the $1 and put it in the center. That indicates the small blind, which is which is dead, there's no action on it. Uh, your $2 blind that you posted um, would be, you would have an option when that came around the table. So that means that if the bet is only $2, so let's say this player calls two and this player calls two, now it's your turn and nobody's raised, the dealer is, gonna, is, is going to ask you uh, it's your, or tell you it's your option, Jeremy. Same as if you were the big blind. Okay. So you have an option to still raise if you'd like, or you can check because you're already you've already paid, paid the two dollars. So yes. All right. So we covered when I got felted and I had to take a break, and so I missed some blinds. What if I actually do have cash in my pocket, mm -hmm. and you know I went all in, I lost my money, I got felted okay. again, but you know I got a hundred bucks here in my pocket. How how does that okay. play out differently? Yeah. So. If you, worst, again, worst case scenario, you go all in and, and you lose, uh, you, and you have money on you and you wanna just re and buy right back in and get dealt in the very next hand, mm -hmm. you, know, you can just tell the dealer, um, I'm buying back in for 100 or I'm buying back in for 300. You, know, you, you can put the cash right out on the table, right? Let's say you buy in for 200. The dealer will say, you know, seat one is 200 behind they'll either sell you 200 out of their tray at the table mm -hmm. or they'll call and ask the supervisor to bring you $200 in chips. Now, is there any rules about how many times you can rebuy or um, I guess it's a little different if I, you know, I've, I started with 300 and now I'm down to like 20 bucks right. or kind of what are the differences there? 
Uh, so there's not any, there's no rule in how many times you can rebuy in a cash game okay. that I've ever heard of. Okay. You can, you can buy in a hundred times if you want in a day, right? <laughs> Hopefully it's not. It's a bad day. Yeah, but okay. it would, yes, exactly. It wouldn't be a great day, but y you can. Uh, there's no limits to how many times you can rebuy. There's a couple different subtleties as far as when you can rebuy and how much you need, like the minimum you need to rebuy in for. So most poker rooms, um, if you have any chips left on the table at all, even if you get down to $5, you can add on as much as you want. So you can add on just $20 if you want to that. You could add on $50 to that. Um, if you go all in and, you're, and you're, you have no chips left and you're to the felt, right? Now at this point you have to buy in for the table minimum uh, because it's considered a new buy-in. Uh, here at GSR, we allow you to do one short buy. So the minimum buy-in on our one two no limit game is $100. We allow you to do one $50 short buy during your session, just kind of as a courtesy to you know, keep people playing. So if I lost all my money, I could buy in for just $50, but one time here at the GSR. After that, right. I would have to meet the minimum, yep. which is $100. Okay. Yep. And some of those things are different from poker room to poker room, but it's pretty standard that if you go all in and you lose and you're felted that you have to buy in for the minimum. The minimum. Yes. Okay. Now I know we've covered this in other videos but can you just recap what the minimum and maximum here because I know I guess Reno you says a little different than the rest of the country as far as minimums and maximums. What do you, what do, you do here? Um, yeah well so here at the GSR in, in the one two no limit game uh, the buy-in, the minimum buy-in is 100, mm -hmm. and the maximum buy-in is 1,000, uh, which is, um, is is not standard. Most places, well, it depends, but some places for like one two no limit will have a maximum buy-in of maybe 300. Mm -hmm. Some of them may be 500. Some places may be uncapped, where they just let you buy-in for whatever you want. Most of the time, it doesn't really affect the game. A whole lot um, you know the general rule in poker if you want a game to be good you want people to buy you, you want a lot of chips on the table right you want a lot of money to be circulating so in my opinion the more that you can buy in for it the better because you know that there's that many more chips for you potential, to win for you to potentially win. win on the table yeah now in and there's another scenario uh, you guys allow matching the stack is that the right. term yes so Let's say, so, so our maximum buy-in here is $1,000, uh, but if you, you know, if, if there's a bigger game going and you kind of want to, you know, play a little bit bigger, and let's say somebody has $1,500 in their stack, then we would allow you to match the biggest stack in the room. So he's been winning, maybe he bought in for 500 and he's up to 1500 yep. over the maximum yep. buy-in, but I can match him you could so ma I can play along with him. Correct. Okay. You can match his stack if you'd like. Yep. So we covered kind of the worst case scenario of me getting felted. Can you cover some situations where maybe I'm doing well? Some good, some uh, good scenarios. Yeah, let's, best case scenario. Let's talk about those. All right. Let's say that in this scenario, you bought in for 100, mm -hmm. and now you have 500 dollars in front of you. Um, and you would like to cash out your winnings okay, and keep playing. So you can't, if in poker, you have to keep all of your money on the table while you're playing. So you can remove money for things like tipping um, or maybe an, an insignificant amount of money like $5 or maybe even 10 um, you know, like say, you know, your wife comes up and she says, Jeremy, I need to tip the cocktail waitress. Can I have five dollars? Right. That's okay. that's things like that are okay. Okay. But you can't remove significant amounts of money of your money off of the table. So me the as game. a play conservative guy, like I'm gonna go. Okay. I, well, I start with 100. I'm gonna put these 200 in my pocket. Right. So that would be called like rat holing or going south or um, just taking money off of the table. Uh, so you can't remove any money from the table until you're done playing. Uh, if you do want to cash out, you have to get up from the game and cash out your, you know, you cash out your whole stack, right? Um, and, and this rule here, we make you wait an hour to be able to get back in the game and you can buy back in for the table minimum. And okay. that's, 
a pretty standard rule, but could vary from poker room to room. Uh, but here, in that scenario, if you cashed out this $500 and you wanted to uh, sit back down for the minimum, 100, you would have to wait an hour to get back in the So game. if there's a waiting list or anything like that, okay, you'd I, have I'm to get, behind, get in line. Yep. And, okay, because that would be a way for me to get around it. Because I guess if I won the table, I need to give the other chain players a chance to win it back, or I just right. need to leave the game. Is that? Yeah, if if that rule didn't exist, everybody would be cashing out their profits constantly. On right, so table. every time I won 50 bucks, just keep, yep. okay, and, and so never the, risk more than the 100. Yep, and so in the spirit of the game, the spirit okay. of gambling and action and and you know it's uh you're you're playing against other players and other guests and uh and like i said if if you if you were allowed to cash your profits out after every hand they would be everybody would be cashing yeah. out every hand now so. that i'm thinking about yeah. that would make yeah so but the same situation applies if i want to take a break or anything like that just yeah. i can take a break i just leave my chips here and yeah so you can get up and you can get up from the table and take a break, or use the restroom, um, or you know, go to go get dinner or lunch anytime you want. Uh, if you miss the blinds, the dealer will just give you a missed blind button. Okay, uh, and, and it's different from every poker room. But if you're gone for, uh, let's say, 45 minutes or an hour, and it's busy and there's a list of people waiting to play, uh, you'll probably get picked up and put back on the list. Um, and so just be just be mindful of that if you do leave the table to try to make you know your break reasonable and come back so, so i know i'm going to dinner you know i'm going to the, the nice steakhouse it's going to take an hour and a half or, or something like that yeah. then just yeah you might as well just pick up your chips cash out um and 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 buy back in when you get here um when you get done with dinner here even sometimes if you get up to go to the to dinner or uh to lunch or something and you're going to cash out you can tell us hey i'm going to go to dinner can you put me back on the list right and before you leave we'll put you on the list that way when you come back you don't have to wait so long so okay. all right josh i thought of one more situation i've done well um good job i see thank you i see my wife hey honey come sit down i'm gonna you know pass you like 200 because i got plenty here what is the kind of rules or situation on something like that um yeah, so you you can't pass money to other players on the table from your stack. Okay. So it's unlike other table games in a casino like blackjack or craps. You can just pass money back and forth between you and your friends or you and your wife. Uh, you can't do that in poker uh, again because it's you're playing against other guests. Um, it's it's table stakes, uh, which is the term that means basically you know. Uh, all the money has to stay on the table, and there's certain rules of how you can, like like this for instance, it's called like scooting somebody money. You can't you can't pass somebody money uh, from your stack to another player seated in the game, even though that money's staying on the table. Uh, it has to it has to remain in your stack. You can give your wife or your friend money out of your pocket. So you take out cash and yeah. give it to her, but okay. yeah, but uh, but not out of your stack. So, this, so same thing as far as I can't pull it off and I can't push it to someone else. I, whatever I have to play with, I need to play with you. Correct. You, or pick it up and leave. Or okay. Yep. So in, in general in poker, right, your chips and your money, uh, they, they pretty much stay in your stack or somebody else's stack until you're done in the game and you're ready to cash out. Then you can do, obviously, whatever you want with your money. But while you're in the game, the money that you win and lose has to remain in your own stack. It's also to protect the integrity of the game, right? Um, if you, if you know, if somebody that you know is sit down and you just and you give them, you know, a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars off of your stack, then you know, you kind of have a, a, a vested interest in their and their result of their game and their hand. Which, so all those things in, combine uh, in general to. You know, to protect the integrity of the game, you have to keep all of your money uh, in front of you on the table at all times until you're done. Then you can cash out and do whatever you want with it. So. Okay. Well, I know some of these situations aren't super common. The miss blind, pretty common, but 
I just wanted to kind of cover everything, so I appreciate you yeah. kind of covering you're all welcome. these topics. And uh, No problem. Yeah, if you're interested in poker, come down here to the GSR here in Reno. This is where I play and have a good time. So until next time, good luck on Coloring Up. Thank you.